Hello, party people. Welcome to Honest Trailer Commentaries, the show where we talk about the show where we talk about someone else's show. Uh, Dan Merle's here. Hello. Daniel Radford's here. Hi. And I'm Joe, uh, a nine-year-old boy. Um, <laughs> we're talking Fantastic Beasts 2 today. Mm. Uh, this is a bad movie. Uh, 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 I don't. I don't usually like to just play all the cards. I, I usually like to have a little more nuance. Yeah. Yeah. I was not Oof. enamored of it. Oh, I, certainly. I. I just. You know, it's. Remember how much you like the Harry Potter movies? Let's do that, but then drain them of all joy and fun yeah. and laughter. Yep. It's literally like someone opened Harry Potter in Photoshop and just took all the levels <laughs> and color down mm-hmm. and yeah, it's. Ugh. I it's and it's it's just so messy. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just it's just two and a half hours of things, mm-hmm. just stuff. And and people, people. Who yep. are these people? <laughs> things and stuff happening, and people. Yeah, just kind of walking into a room and going into a story for no reason. Yeah, and they just <laughs> very just, little of it has to do with beasts. They just, yeah. they just open a book and talk to someone you've never seen before, and it's, is that Jessica Williams? And they close the book, and you're like, wait, what happened? Wait, what? Where's what? Jessica what Williams? Happened? Where did she go? Why, why, I why was she Willie? <laughs> why was she here? And where did she go? And what's going on? Why yeah. is she dressed like Solange? What <laughs> is happening? Whole... That is a joke for two of our audience, and I'm totally. And they okay loved with it though. It. They loved it though. Here's some. Here's Hogwarts. Here's some sad flashbacks in Hogwarts. Here. Yeah, this is yeah. um, this is a rough, rough movie, and I I think this this team and especially like. Spencer hated this movie so much, it hurt him so much that he took a break from caring for his new baby. It's true. To, it's true. to write a section of this on his trailer. We've not heard from Spencer in over two weeks. At all. No, no, other, no, other than I have a baby now and yeah. baby is healthy. Yeah. Yes. Nor should we have. No. 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 Yeah. And he, unbidden, <laughs> writes right us. It was just like, I had to write this. I have to go change diapers and be a father. But I had to. I had to send you this. So okay, yeah, that came in Friday night. Yep. And uh, so we shifted some stuff around. Um, yeah, let's just jump. Let's just jump right into let's this. Dive one. into we'll, it. We'll tear this sucker apart as we go. Love J.K. Rowling through the Harry Potter years. You knew her mystery novels were just a phase. You swore Cursed Child was better live. You defended her right to, uh, tweak some character details after the fact. You looked past all the flaws of the first Fantastic Beast to see its potential. And now, this? This is how you repay our loyalty? I am done standing for you, J.K. Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. So pause. That was the fevered email that we received from yeah. Spencer to Jay Gilbert. <laughs> we took a little editorializing yeah. out of it because I think it was also just ranting of like, this movie sucks! Yeah. <laughs> so we cleaned, we, we cleaned it up a little, but yeah, that was our Spencer yeah, rant. That he's was so, Spencer's so rant. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Spencer is one of, of the core group. He is absolutely, he and Roth are the two Potterheads. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Spencer, from the beginning, I mean, going back to our original Harry Potter trailer, was always the one who was hardest on Harry Potter because he loved it so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hates Quidditch because he loves Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand his pain. This movie makes me never want to wear my Hufflepuff scarf again. Oh, true. And I, lo- I, I love that Hufflepuff scarf. <laughs> uh, this movie makes me never want to wear a suit, so. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no more suits. Ugh. Yeah. This is a bummer. This whole thing's a bummer. Just a downer. Just a. Yeah. I got to the end of it and I was like, oh. and even every when there are moments that are like fun and silly, it's mm-hmm. because it directly leads to something horrible and <sighs> terrible. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Like um, you know that whole first bit with. Uh, Queenie and what's his name, where they're doing really fun comedy and everything's really silly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're doing all these weird gags. It's like, haha, he can't hold things. And then it's because she has taken away all of his consent. <laughs> yeah. And free will. <laughs> and free will. Yeah. Because she desires to marry him against his, like when he, she did not have permission. Ugh. And so it's like, okay, well, you took this really fun beat and now it's really weird and sad and awkward. Yeah. Even the Ministry of Magic, we were watching. You know, at one point there's a little 
funny little vacuum cleaner thing that yeah, goes the by weird, and like yeah, robot, brushes yeah. the suits by, and I'm like, oh, that's some cute Harry Potter magic. But then later, they're in the Ministry <laughs> of Magic, and there's these old ancient wizards hunched over these big carts, heavy book carts, pushing them through, and I'm just like, well, wait, how come the vacuum cleaners get magic things, but you're making these ancient, yeah. old, yeah. tired, weary old wizards push these heavy-ass carts of books yeah. around. Why can't Nana use an Accio spell? Yeah, exactly. like, I don't... It's like every bit of happiness leads to a more, more, much of a downer question down the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Credence is back. Yeah. But he's... Even, even he's somehow even sadder. In sadder, this one. yeah. I don't yeah. know how you did it because the first one I saw Credence as an allegory for child abuse, like yeah. the the what are they called the the orb that you turn into, the mm-hmm. the evil magic mm-hmm. orb thing, yes. whatever it's called. I can't remember now. I saw that as an allegory for uh, child abuse, mm. uh, and I don't know how you get much darker than that. But somehow they did it. Where even just his posture, he's hunched over more in this one, mm. and his like haircut is even harsher. I was gonna say he's working in a circus. He he got a very stylish haircut from the last film. I yeah. think it would be. And the circus, you're thinking, yay, man, wizard circus. This sounds dope. Look at nope, that fireworks. Oh no, <laughs> people in cages. Yeah. Hooray! Yay. Like can you forced slavery? <laughs> can you think of any two words put together that sound happier than wizard circus? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wizard circus. <laughs> You hear those two words and you're like, oh, wow. I'm so in. A wizard circus. Go to wizard circus. Uh, nope. Death and misery and, and cages. Uh. If I keep making her do this, she's going to turn into a snake. So she better keep doing this. Oh, God. Oh. Let's keep going. All right. <sighs> wizard circus. <laughs> right. You love the whimsical world of Harry Potter. A you place did. where trying to kill a baby just marked him as a heroic chosen one. Now, visit a new chapter where they just kill babies. As the wizarding world takes a full <laughs> turn toward a dark universe for the bleakest, wettest, darkest chapter yet. Okay, did WB suck all the joy out of Harry Potter for Aquaman and Shazam? Because if this series ends up with Jacob blowing up the Ministry of Magic with a jar of pee, I'm going to be very upset. Pause. Hey, you can always tell I wrote it if it's a long sentence that it was impossible for John to say. Um, sorry, John. Uh, sorry about that, bud. He's got some great reads in this one, by the way. Um, why? It's so weird that, like, Warner Brothers course corrected the DC movies. Mm-hmm. They're more fun. They're mm. crazy. They're, like, they're silly. Mm-hmm. They're colorful. But... I do feel like they benicolated all of that color and 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 whimsy out of Harry Potter. Like, why can't I'm starting like, to think that there's like a picture of Dorian Gray situation <laughs> happening in the basement because it's not it's not that it's not always the same franchise at Warner Brothers. It's just that it's some franchise at Warner yeah. Brothers that just takes a turn toward misery and yeah. anger and dark gloominess and. And it, always, and, yeah. they, and they move it around. It's like there's some kind. The portrait of... has a finite amount of joy, right? Yeah. And and it must draw. It draws its power from sadness and anger. So they must then th- throw it into the public eye. It's bizarre. Like, it's, I don't get it. It's called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. <laughs> yeah. Where are my Fantastic Beasts? Except for you know the, this the, one the little. Has... They have those little tribbles, but that's all we get. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and a woman who again turns into a snake that will become a snake forever. Yes. Where is I want make it like Pokemon? It's so much fun. Make them cute. Oh, little beasts, whatever. <laughs> Instead, we get Wizard Hitler. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah. It, it's. Why aren't all, if if the point of this was the story of how Newt releases his textbook, why isn't every movie just centered around a beast, shenanigans, and some kind of story, you know, revolves around that, and and it's fun, and fun doesn't mean devoid of substance. I think there's shenanigans going on. I think J.K. Rowling wanted to to write the prequel to the Harry Potters, and people are like, you know what, prequels are... Prequels Mm -hmm. are kind of going out of style, like, is there anything else you're interested in? She's like, yes, I... 
you know, this book, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find. I want to write a series about a fantastic group of animals and the wondrous adventures finding all of them. And Warner Brothers is like, yes, featuring yes. characters from Harry Potter. So, yeah. Okay, and at the end of it, we introduce Grindelwald. And like, okay, uh, but we already said yes, so we can't say no. It's like, and the second one is about him rising to be the dark wizard. And she turns uh, into the emperor yeah. of this lord. Like, what's happening? Yeah, fantastic Beasts, and I'll yeah. get to them later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, was something I, I I didn't put into this draft, which I had meant to, which was because it's what I've, the main thing I've been thinking about this whole time is that th- this is an instance where everyone was either too scared to tell her no or just weren't allowed to because of her contract. Right. Yeah. And it's just one of those things where it's like being surrounded by yes folk is not necessarily good for art. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, they say I don't, that they're changing some stuff around. So. Yeah, because I don't want to hear about any more wizard hate crimes. I just <laughs> want the beasts, and I want to know where to find them. <laughs> I'll tell you this. I'll even take your wizard hate crimes if you can give them to me in a narrative that makes sense. Like, if you can get me from a logical point A to point B, mm-hmm. where it's like, where it's like, I hypnotized you so we could come to London to get married because it's legal for us to get married in London. And then uh, now I'm going to join Johnny Depp because he wants us to be able to get married, even though we can get married where we are right now. Uh, and even though with my own eyes, I've seen him say that he thinks humans should die. Like, But he ah. wants what we want. No, he, no, no, he, he, doesn't he not. wants the literal opposite. He gave a very long monologue about how he wants the literal opposite of what you want. <laughs> he, literally, he just called your... A husband like a rodent, basically. Not, not different, not other, just different. Yeah, like, and it's like that's that you still that's bad. That's, not, that's bad. That, like, right. I know that some people would say like, well, but that's how traditionally that's how evil has sold itself, and I will agree that yeah. is that is definitely yes. true. But he is he is still very much openly about pure blood. Yes. I'm just saying there's not a lot of lines to read between. There, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the <laughs> bad guy. Except for your man. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like there's nothing wrong with that villainous. Plan, mm-hmm. except for the weird. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. But uh, but it's everyone's reaction to it makes zero sense. Mm-hmm. Bleh, yeah. We're gonna be here for three days. We yeah. will. Let's go. Continue. All your favorite characters from the first Fantastic Beasts are back, like Newt Scamander, who's gone from awkward beast lover to awkward chick magnet. Okay, I stop, us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I irrationally upset about this. Every, why is every woman in this series in love with Newt Scamander? <laughs> what are they seeing that I'm not? It's the Archie thing where it's just, it, I mean, now obviously Archie is hot because we decided we wanted hot Archie. Mm-hmm. But if you go back and look at some of those old, he looked like Newt Scamander, which is fine, but he's not interested. He's very blatantly uninterested in many of them except for one. Mm-hmm. But they cannot help but say, you know, like, ooh, you, you're so hot. It, it, it's, 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 it's. Daniel, is it hot because gingers. they. Is it because they can fix him oh man i mean in this harry potter yes if it was any (laughs) other version it would be because he's so charming and he's so passionate about what he loves but we didn't get that so yeah in this version it is because um you know it is weird that they let us say okay let's talk assistant lady because this is her like one thing she does in this movie why introduce Mm -hmm. that character what is the point of her like is she gonna come back in part three I will I will say this and I love Harry Potter. Mm. Love Harry Potter. Like the books, own all the books, like the movies, own all the movies, watched them multiple times. However, this is kind of a JK Rowling thing mm-hmm. where the arcs between male characters and female characters are generally kept to will they or won't they do they like each other or yeah. don't they? Yeah. And will yeah. they end up together or won't they? Yeah. Yeah. Harry and Hermione, which I I would argue uh, the movies did a little more of a will they want direct they? Not, yeah. not will they want they but 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 definitely directly address their relationship a little more directly mm-hmm. as far as like how they interact between two humans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of the, the 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 a lot of the girl Hogwarts students and the boy Hogwarts students were ultimately boiled down to do they, do they like this person and will they not? Except yeah. for Luna, who's a great character. Who's a great yeah. character. And, and she's just totally off. But then even there, it's like, and then she married Neville, I think. That yeah. would make sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, her Patronus was not the Bechdel test. Um, <laughs> let's keep going. Let's go. This poor lady. His lizard-faced love interest. She has eyes just like a salamander. Don't say that. 
master <laughs> face maker Jacob, who's still making those faces, and the dreamy Queenie, who heroically hypnotizes and kidnaps her boyfriend? Well, I'm curious when you were gonna wake me up, after we had five kids? Huh. Well, at least she didn't join forces with Wizard Hitler. Queenie, don't do it! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, <worry>. pause. <laughs> yeah, this was another one where... When, when I say things happen, that's something in this movie that just sort of happened, and they, they kind of... They provide you with the reason why the movie says it happened, but like you're saying, it doesn't make that much sense mm -hmm. why ultimately she would make that decision. Yeah, it's because she cried in the rain one time. Yeah, she was really sad in the rain. Little, the mm -hmm. one henchman number three. Well, she had the, she had like the Marty McFly thing about being called crazy. Yeah. Yep. I guess the only. The only justification is by doing the the hypnotizing him into wanting to get married and taking away his free will, she is showing that she is capable of being evil. Then just show her turn evil. Don't make it about their relationship, which mm -hmm. is not which is a love that cannot be. Make it about her slowly doing things because it's you know it's that selfishness in her right. that starts turning her. And I think that's what hit me wrong was her her the only motivation that she was given through the whole movie is she wants to be with Jacob. Yeah, that she and she wants to marry Jacob. He had reservations because he's like, listen, your kind doesn't like my kind and it doesn't mesh. And so she tried to hypnotize him so that he forgot about that and she was going to marry him. And then when they snapped him out of it, then he went back to saying, like, you can't like you, you, this is not going to this is not good. Like, I, I don't think you're thinking this through. And then, but that remained her motivation to the point where she joined the one person who will not allow that to happen. So that completely goes against her yeah. entire motivation yeah. throughout the film. Like even before she goes through the fire, her motivation only is still, I want to be with you. But then she takes actions that preclude her completely from being, that's what I mean. It's like, there needs to be more. I wish there had been more to her story yeah. Yeah. as to why she did that other than just, I like this guy and I want to be with yeah, him. But like what what other parts of her yes. are are enchanted by this? What is the door that opens? And it's just because they're doing 47 other things in this film. It's like Johnny Depp talks to her in the drawing room. For a minute. For yeah. a second. And this then, guy that she's seen kill people right. and be horrible. Uh, and while we're on them, uh, uh, Jacob and, and Queenie, uh, a, my love for Jake Kowalski is well documented yeah, uh, he's on great. this channel. Yeah. Uh, how did you make me not like him very much? Because well, like, he turned into a plot device. Oh my god! My f there's there's so much. I'd also like the, this the dumb explanation of of what happened to him. Uh, the my favorite two things in the first movie that mm -hmm. make me overlook everything I didn't like about the movie is mm -hmm. one his sad moment when he he's discovered this world and he steps out into that rain that kills his memories, and then the beautiful hopeful moment where she comes into the bakery and through the power. Love. She <laughs> like he overcomes the magic. That's that's how he remembers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should be how. That, that's it. That's how. And then they had come in. And he's like, oh well, it only erases bad memories and my memories. And it's like, no, no. He, it's so beautiful that he overcame magic because he loves her so much. What are you doing? And if it's only bad memories, did Hermione Granger's parents hate her because she <laughs> used the same spell? <laughs> to erase herself from their lives, and they should have remembered their daughter if they liked her. Oh, there's all kinds of spell issues in this. There's yeah. the Iron Man hologram sm uh, spell oh, that, yeah. like, you blow a bunch of dust around, and it shows you everything that happened at the scene of the, the at any given place, like, 12 hours before, which would have been useful in any number yeah. of yeah. situations. Like, almost every Harry Potter movie involved... Uh, where is some... I, someone was here, but now I need to find them. Like, a little... <sighs> Yeah. And then you see everything. Like the spells became plot devices, the characters became yeah. plot devices. Mm -hmm. That's we, what bothered me. We wrestled with getting this into the trailer. It didn't end up coming in. And I, I, we got to move on. I, I apologize. Uh, but yeah, we talked about the spell. I kind of, The spells just felt like superhero, just vague superhero yes. powers in this mm -hmm. movie versus like in Harry Potter. It was like even the ex, even like the master wizards and witches uh, had very certain spells. You mm -hmm. knew what they were doing. Potions and incantations yeah. and, and certain and ways things had to be just, pronounced. Like what's the spell that throws a guy across a room, makes a chair appear, and then ties him to the chair and then pushes the chair back? Like what's that? Bondage expector on it. Yay! <laughs> Red Rumus. <laughs> <laughs> Tyus. We're not going to beat that. Let's go. <laughs> 
anyone that the first movie established as the main characters of the series, because this one spends most of its time with characters you've never met or cared about. Nope. With multiple flashbacks of this lady's traumatic childhood, her love triangle with Newt and his grim suit-wearing brother, the mission of this grim suit-wearing assassin, and this grim suit-wearing man who's hunting this grim suit-wearing boy from the first one. Come on! This whole movie is just grim-faced people in suits talking. Even Dumbledore is just Jude Law looking grim in a suit. <laughs> Can we just go back to Ron Weasley making dumb faces at stuff? Harry! What? Ah, uh, thanks, Weasley. But while everyone Pause. else... Yeah. Oh, the good old days. Yeah, Lita Lestrange was a photo and a name in the, in the first movie. And this one introduces her, like, as the protagonist. Yeah. Like, jump on board. She's been the protagonist I've, the whole time. All this family backstory that has nothing to do with anything. Well, I mean, except that it's a part of the bigger world. It's, it's, that's... When they introduced Lita, I thought that I, because I had not rewatched the first film, mm -hmm. the first time that I saw the second film, I hadn't, I hadn't watched the first one in a while, and I just assumed that they had introduced Lita in the first, like actually introduced her mm -hmm. in the first one, and that I'd forgotten because mm -hmm. she literally just walks into the movie yeah, hardcore, like, same. "Hey, what's going on? How you doing?" Newt? Anyway, this is just like, yeah. "Oh wait, I must have forgotten." No, it's just literally. It's like if in Iron Man Two, Don Cheadle had had his big intro shot and was like, "Yeah, it's me. Get over it." But War Machine hadn't been in Iron Man One. <laughs> is how it yeah. felt. <laughs> like they yeah. mentioned him, but yeah, but, we're but like, "What?" He just walks in, and and they're already best friends, and yeah. they're. Oh, okay. And their whole, the whole thing with it, with him and Tina, and not Tina, yeah, Tina is like, it's based on a mistake and a misprint in a newspaper that, like, what? Yeah, that's the whole, the, the only thing that is keeping these two, you know, Scamander and <laughs> mm -hmm. Salamander eyes apart is that something, there was a weird gossip page where they talk about the Fantastic Beasts guy, and <laughs> I guess oars are all the rage, and everyone wants to know what the oars are yeah. up to in yeah. Wizardland. But so mentioning that he w had gotten engaged right. to her, but had not, and so now Tina is upset. All of this could have been taken care of through a letter, probably. Yeah, there are owls. Or, are, if I may posit, a, a stronger screenplay that establishes conflict between characters on screen instead of a random anonymous off-screen event that happened before we haven't caught up with the movie. And case. again, doesn't that seem like that would be kind of a fun, wacky thing? <laughs> oh, it's kind of fun yeah. and wacky. There was a misprint. Now people think we're engaged. But no, yeah. once again, it's dark and depressing. Yeah, because even their relationship could be charming. Because it was she's in weird. the first movie. Yeah, it yeah. honestly was. Yeah. Because she's odd, he's completely strange, and I love the idea of everyone around them just being like, I don't get it, but I'm glad they're happy. Like, that's yeah. a yeah. fun idea to me, and it's... Yeah. yeah, they all had to. They, you had to ignore all that so they could all go to a, uh, meet in a crypt and talk for twenty five minutes in the third <laughs> <Hooray>. act. <laughs> that, uh, that was another thing that didn't make it in when we were just talking out ideas. But like Star Wars prequel crimes, it's mm. all just sitting and standing and sitting and standing and politics and sitting and standing. It's like why? Why do you think that that's what I want out of a? <sighs> I, you know, I, I, maybe they thought this was Magic Chinatown and we really needed to get into who was whose brother. <laughs> Forget it, Newt. <laughs> it's Hogsmeade. It's Hogsmeade. <laughs> oh, I don't wow. need to know whose brother is whose brother and whose dad was a dad. I don't yeah. need it. Nope. Nope. Let's keep going. But while everyone else is grimly talking, the evil Grindelwald is also mostly just talking in living rooms, on roofs, in alleys, in creepy auditoriums, and while overlooking mountains at a very swanky ski lodge, all to unveil his master plan to prevent World War II? The Here power we lost. How long will it take before they're turning their weapons on us? Wait, what? So what you're saying is that Wizard Hitler makes some good points? He wants what we want. Whew, no. Boy, is there a Hogwarts Express off this franchise, or? So Pause. Toss away. <laughs> Let's talk about the World War II thing. Blanket statement, I understand that he's using this as a larger manipulation to get yes. people on his side. I get that. Yes. But, A, tying the, like Harry Potter works in its own weird, charming, silly way because it is divorced from the real world. Anytime with Harry Potter books, someone is like, but how? this effect I'm like I don't care it's about Hogwarts it's Harry Potter shut up you're overthinking it but when you directly tie the movies the, or the stories into the real world then you've opened yourself up to it and it's mm -hmm. like why didn't wizards want to prevent World War two and the Holocaust and like the Chinese like yeah this is the <laughs> bummer version of the Twitter wizard toilet yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really is. Just, just something we really did is. not need. 
weird. These are just different bombs dropping. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or this is somewhere where they, because the best part about that was when they're watching that and Jacob, like, horrified because he's the one that had to deal with it the most out of all of them. Just yeah. goes, another yeah. war. Yeah, like, he's, he was he, in the Great War. He's, he was in the Great War. He's like, he's a muggle. He lives in this world. And they could have done something really... Like, if they'd use that and maybe both Jacob and Queenie join Grindelwald, mm. so they're still together, Jacob That's has an actual motivation to join Grindelwald because he's like, whoa, I don't like what this guy's selling, but if this is true and this is what fall on this guy is going to prevent, or at least, like, so I can escape this somehow, then... Maybe, maybe I need yeah, to rethink maybe. my position, but that's that's not the way they go. And yeah, I get the the things like yeah, well, Grindelwald's manipulating them. Like I, 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 get, I, I get that. Yeah, but I you still put yourself that. in a weird corner. But it's yeah, where the initial reaction for the good guys has to be like, no, that stuff's fine. We hate you. You know, like it, or it, even the the fact that it come that it then comes to pass. Is yeah, we all know. We know spoiler what happens. Alert, spoiler right. alert, World War II still happens. Right. Unless we find out after the fact that Harry Potter took place in a really weird alternate nineties, <laughs> like Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. 90s. Yeah. yeah. Full Inglorious. Yeah. Oh God. Oh. What do we just figure out? Ooh. Let's do that movie. Interesting. <laughs> if wizards are added to the Tarantino verse, I'm in. I think I'm kind of in. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, World War II obviously still happened, but it was yeah. a different version. Uh, yeah, but the, and you're just, and even just connecting, you're like, well, now now it's all thrust together. Now we have to just ask all basic questions, like why why aren't wizards just out in the open? And they're like, we're wizards. You can't really do anything about it because you can't hurt us. You can't kill us. Mm. Let's go. <laughs> Watching this physically hurts, Joe. So toss away your wizard robes and welcome to commentary for a Fantastic Beast movie that's light on the beasts but fantastically depressing, and start hoping for a chosen one to show up and save this franchise. Cause there's still three more of these slogs to go. Just tell me my story, then you can end it. You know what? I'm tapped out on fantasy prequels. Ugh, what else is on? Ugh, Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings prequels. Fool me once, Hollywood. Oh, just kidding. I'm gonna watch him. <laughs> yeah, I love that yeah. from John. Emperor Pale Patine. Pause. Sheldon. Oh. He's not just pale, he's ashy. And I think that's the thing that bothers me the most. He is not just pale, very he dry. also very much needs chapstick. <laughs> okay, that's it, that's all I His know. voice needs chapstick in this movie. It's rough. All right, keep going. Sheldon Cooper. Hey, I'm gawking here. Get out of my head, Queenie. Black old son. <laughs> American horror story. A high schooler's gonna behead this lady someday. Fun. <sighs> Jude Law as Jude Law. The greater good. 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 This one's for us. The greater good. The greater good. Shut it! And <laughs> attempting to remember the names of any of these new characters. Lee Leslie LaSat faces. <laughs> uh, Eva Brana Cadavra and Wrigley Sweatbrow. It's the best Eva Braun joke I've ever made. Dale <laughs> good. Bad Mage? I don't know, Frenchy McMystery Hat. Your name will be written in glory. Cool, cool, but uh, like, what are their names? Her Dark Material. Robert Holpe. Robert Holpe nailing it. <sighs> Leave it to Johnny Depp to introduce vaping to the wizarding world. <laughs> so, uh. the... The Nagini thing is another example of my problem with, with prequels, which is yeah. mm -hmm. that they're obviously setting her up. She's on the side of g good. Mm -hmm. They're obviously setting her up as some kind of a tragic yeah. character. This, mm -hmm. this, this, right, as of now, as the, the appearance seems to be here's this good person, tragic person with this blood curse. She's going to be a snake someday. And uh, she's going to be developed throughout the rest of these movies. Okay. If that's the way you want to go with it, but the problem is, Neville, like, like, s s yeah, like yeah. going through and like yeah. it's a hero it's shot. A that is like moment. one of the biggest like yes moments in the history of Harry Potter. Yeah. Like that's that's just like Neville, yes. Like, you did not know that was a thing. He's the, that's the reason Harry when can they defeat shot that. Voldemort. That's like yes. 
they, yes, that is awesome. And and, then, and now every it's time like, you watch it, now it's like, oh, but I feel bad for Nagini. Like, no, you're not supposed to feel bad for Nagini. You're supposed to feel bad for anybody in that moment. Like that is like a fist pump moment. Yeah. And now it's gonna be tense with like, but she was really a tragic figure, guys. It's yeah. like, no, oh. stop putting your dumb tweets <laughs> into the stuff now. Like, yeah. she, I. That, that's another reason why I really hate that she's now got like creative control over these movies and gets to keep going because I've never liked these weird after the fact changes she makes because put them in your books. Put them in, you wrote books. Put them in the books. Stop doing rewrites on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> it drives me insane. And now, but now she can like do it with a big budget and it, it's just, it's, it's just, I don't, yeah, Nagini's a, the weird one to me. Especially because, yeah, like there's no way, there's no way that you had even thought about that because you would have looked at that cut because I know they were showing her dailies and I know, you know, she was a producer on the films. There's yeah. no way she looks at that and goes, can we shoot that differently? Because Nagini's a lady and you're going to find out later. Mm -hmm. Like, no. It's why these are my least favorite kinds of prequels when you go through and you fill in gaps from yeah. the lore because Didn't want it. ultimately Didn't it's going it. to conflict. My friend Chewbacca. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's going to conflict in some way with something that came before it and it calls all these weird mm -hmm. issues, tone issues to arise. And it's uh, the thing that I was most appealing about to me when I heard about Fantastic Beasts was like, oh, this is going to be like a new corner of the Harry Potter universe yes. that I've never seen before. Yes. And in less than a movie, we're right back to like, no, this is just going to sketch in details yeah. of what you are. Remember knew. the saddest parts of yeah. the David Yates Harry Potter movies? It's just more. It's just more. The, the, the misery of the end of Harry Potter, which, by the way, was earned because you had the joy at the mm -hmm. beginning and it was a slow progression into the dark wizard world at the end. Let's just use that dark part. More. Just that, yeah. And it's like, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I I'm, completely agree with you. That was what I wanted. I wanted a fun, silly adventure that gets yeah. us to open up more of the world and more of these things where, again, you could have put the things that you tweeted about, except, of course, Wizard Toilets. Never needed to know anything about those. That would be a good <laughs> alt title. Just Wizard Toilet. Wizard Toilet. <laughs> it's so upsetting. But, yeah, that's, I completely agree with you. It's you had such an opportunity here to really show us the world. Some of the things that have been on the website, some of the things that have been in other books, you know, that would have been, to me, that was also what was interesting about this. I don't want to relitigate the Wizard Wars. Yeah, but that's what you're gonna get for three more movies. Three more movies. I think we've got some deleted scenes, JTE. Oh, indeed we Ooh. do. From Warner Brothers and writer J.K. Rowling comes a confusing, long, and boring sequel that proves you can be the J.K. Rowling of wizard books and still be the Fifty Shades Lady of screenwriting. <laughs> oh. It's our, our first hey intro. Hey friends, do you love the wizarding world's every carefully constructed oh, detail? We run. J.K., because now she's taking crapping on her own creation from your Twitter feed to the big screen by wrecking the lore. Your brother seeks to destroy you. Breaking her timeline. Go with Professor McGonagall, please. Come. And Not replacing her straightforward Hogwarts adventures with a plot so dense, you'll have to keep the Harry Potter wiki open while you watch it. There stands the despairing daughter. You are the winged Corporate raven synergy. returned from the sea, but I, I'm the avenger of my family's ruin. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Leah's dad <laughs> Love is Corvus. Bit. Sad to cut Because it. of her mom, she only loosely connects to Bellatrix. And... Wait, why am I doing homework? Just let me enjoy a movie, movie. <laughs> So that, was, Pause. Uh, that was deleted because Spencer wrote that intro, wrote that intro mm -hmm. which we thought covered some of the same. Yeah, ground. it was kind of double dipping a little bit. And, and the trailer was kind of long. We yeah, thought, we, we, we had some things to say. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of people say, well, don't cut anything. It's like, I yeah, know. You, you, got, you got Sometimes to eventually. You just got to get the rhythm. Yeah. You don't want to yeah. belabor the point. Sometimes it just feels good to get it out there. I could have done a whole run on just him uh, having a double in prison and then rescuing his double from a flying carriage instead of just quietly leaving the prison <laughs> and they don't find out that he's gone for the next five to ten years. But cool, cool, cool. Uh, Y'all do you. Uh, we've got some more starrings. Grostradamus. Oh. Grimdewald, mm -hmm. Oldemort, okay. Beastmaster, yeah. Beast Mode, yeah. Killer Queenie, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Send Danielle, congratulations on your first cut joke on Honest Trailer. I did it! Oh, <laughs> let's all appreciate Robert 
God bless Robert Holtby. Mm. He's incredible. Yep. And he is very talented. And he did this whole title thing here before the title came in. But it, it takes a minute, and it the the, the like the, the the rhythm was a little off. Just off, yeah. And so we didn't. JT, go full screen on this, people, if you can. This whole thing that he he, he this is brilliant, and we just weren't able to include it. This is great. We don't deserve dark it. Dark material. We don't. We don't deserve Robert. Is what is what I mean. Nope. <laughs> yeah. It just. Okay, does uh, this conference table always show pictures of what's being this. talked about in the room? They were talking about lunch. Would it show a ham sandwich? <laughs> Look, I think it's rad that Dumbledore is gay, but I refuse to accept that his taste in men is a grayscale Johnny Depp. Not at the time, to be fair. Yeah. But still, Here's obviously. This, yeah. Younger, pastier. Yes. <laughs> so, that that's it. That's the Honest Trailer for Fantastic Beasts. Ooh, we did it. Crimes of Grindelwald. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't feel any better. Dan? No, I, only because there's three more. So it's like, <laughs> whatever I'm putting to bed now, I'm just going to have to dig back up in yeah. a, a couple years. Ugh, Danielle. Okay. Give me my beasts. I just want my beasts. I just want my beasts. I don't want any Grindelwald. I need to eat some chocolate frogs after that dementor of a film, man. That <laughs> was that was rough. Uh, that's it. Uh, <clears throat> we, I think we went kind of long on this one. Thank you guys for hanging in and watching with us. What's happening next week? I think it may have been referenced. Ooh. In mm. this trailer. Ooh. Mm. We'll see you guys then. Bye.